With the cross bracing in black, and that really looks good. First spot weld, wish me luck. I'm turning back from here. not terrible once you're in here. It's actually kind of comfortable. But getting in and out, I don't like it. So from a welding standpoint, the trunk floor is complete. Got everything done, got our spot welds in, welded up our seam right in the middle where the two pans meet. Everything's done. Got all that lip on the back side completed, all our spot welds and the wheel housing. Everything is ready to go. Now we'll go back and clean up some of these spot welds where I might not have done so hot. I gotta give a big shout out to Mike over at Classic Mustangs 429 for helping getting my settings on my welder sorted out and really getting the best weld that I, I could for at least my seal level. But I think it really did turn out very nicely. And you know, I'll, I will go back through and smooth down this a little bit, but it, it wasn't, it won't take a lot. You know, we'll clean it up and you'll never be able to notice that there was actually two pieces of metal there. And you know, once everything's said and done, we'll hit it with some seam sealer on the, the edges right here where the panels meet, hit it with some black, and it'll look really nice. I can't wait to see this thing all completed. All right, so the trunk floor, as you saw, is finally welded in place. But now we actually have to weld in these tank straps. Now I actually ordered these also from Classic Industries. And the thing about it is that this end over here actually is supposed to uh, sit in between the support and the, uh, the pan itself. I didn't know that going into this, but I was able to actually wedge it right up between the two. And I'll, I'll weld that in there in place. But whenever I had it sitting in there, it would not fit flush and it would hang on this end over here. So what I've done, taking the jack stand, after I found where my measurements I wanted them to be, I went and picked it up and then just barely put a little bit of pressure on it. That way it'll hold itself flush. So now I'll do a couple spot welds on each end and once that's in place, it should hold itself up and then we can do a couple welds here and there. So here's our original rear axle. Now this is an eight and three quarter and it's pretty standard among these B bodies and E bodies that we're working on right now. And again, my charger has one, my truck has one. I've got a few vehicles that have one. And it's a pretty versatile and fairly stout rear axle. It isn't the strongest that came from the factory, but this is definitely right up there with it. And the best part about it is the dropout center section. So if you want to change your gears, it's as simple as pulling your axles, dropping out their gears, putting it back in, and you're done. So I like this rear axle. I really like the way that it's set up. Very similar to a Ford 9 inch. Basically the same style, the dropout center section. And it's very handy. That's why a lot of people like those. So what we're going to do real quick while we're waiting on some parts to come in, we're going to take a break from the floor pan and get all this stuff disassembled. Because we have leaf springs coming in. We've got new rear shocks. We've got brakes, we've got brake lines, U-bolts, we've got the whole nine yards to totally rebuild this rear axle. And what we want to do though is I'm going to wait to drop this center section out last because one, it's heavy, and two, it's full of gear oil. So we don't want to mess with that just yet. Wait till we get that on jack stands, that way we can take it all apart. But for right now, I want to get my shocks off, let's get these springs out of the way, brake lines, we'll pull the wheels off, 
pull the brakes apart, get all of that disassembled, get it ready for paint, and then reassemble when our springs come in. attempting to save these and whenever they give you this much trouble and you've already got new ones we'll fix it so this drum on this side I actually had pulled off in a previous video so whenever I pull this wheel off you'll actually see what's behind the drum and what makes the drum brakes work so we have a few components this is our axle flange. These are the shoes that actually make the brakes work. And it's a variation of springs that hold tension whenever the wheel cylinder in here actually presses against these brakes. When you push the pedal, there's a, a basically a hydraulic rod in here that'll push outward and push these out to uh, press against the drum and stop your vehicle. Then on the bottom here, you have a, uh, an adjuster that will rotate and click as the, uh, the shoes expand and they get more worn, it'll actually uh, cause the, the shoes to lock in place in a further position out, so that way every time you press the pedal, it'll feel the exact same instead of having to push so far for the brakes to actually work. But we're gonna leave all this together, and what we're gonna do is pull the axle, because once we pull the axle, we can actually take apart the rest of the center section of the rear end. Before you do all this, make sure you secure your rear axle with jack stands, because this sucker is heavy, and if it were to swing, it might can take you out. It's very heavy. But anyway, I just wanted to kind of show you another side of the uh, rear axle. This is the dropout center section that I was mentioning. You uh, pull the axles out, undo all these bolts around here on the housing, and then it'll slide right out. And that's what's great about these, these uh, rear axles as far as changing gears. As long as your gear set is properly set up, all you got to do is swap it out. One thing on these factory center sections is that if it's the same one that came with the car, typically you will see this tag. And this tag right here denotes our gear ratio. So it's kind of hard to see, but that actually says 323. I'll zoom in on it as best as I can, but that is a 323 gear ratio. What that means is for every one rotation of the drive shaft, the rear wheels are going to rotate 3.23 times. So the axle has this hole drilled into it, and what that's for is so you can rotate it and access the uh, five bolts that are on the back of the axle flange. So as you go, rotate a little bit, rotate a little bit, keep going until you get all of your bolts undone. So that's what I'll do. I'm gonna make my way around, undo all five of these bolts, and then we'll pull the axle out. A little safety tip, I put a tire up under the third member here and it did actually end up tilting off the jack stand, but it fell right onto the tire. So that's why I put it there. I wanted to show you guys that it actually does happen. So now that we have all five of those bolts out, should be able to pull on this and undo the uh, the axle. Well, it might not come out. We'll have to want we'll to play with it here and see if we can make it come loose. So you, or you can see, I actually just kind of pulled the uh, the axle flange off of the, the housing itself. Our brakes are loose now, so that's that's a good sign. There we go. That one was an easy one. To get something to catch all this fluid, actually. Now we can pull all this out without making a mess. There we go. One axle out. Now we could remove all of this, but our brake line's still holding on. So I just wanted to demonstrate that it is loose. We'll just have to undo our brake line from the back side. Now, if I actually wanted to keep that brake line, I would for sure unbolt it. I'm just going to cut it because I don't need it and I'm going to put a new one on it anyway. Cut. 
and remove. Now from this point, you can see inside we have our axle seals right here and it still looks pretty good on the inside. But what we'll do, take all this gasket material off and get all new stuff right here. These little metal shims can be probably reused if I wanted to. But anyway, what I'm going to do is do the same thing to the other side. And then this gives us access to all this right up in here. It makes it easier to clean up all the dirt and rust and all that garbage that's on the axle itself to get it ready for paint. So for everybody new who hasn't been a subscriber for that long, this is my good buddy Repo. He's my shop dog. He hangs out with me out here and gets stuff done. Keeps me company. Supervises the shop. So here's the old foreman right here himself. So everybody say hey to Repo. Good boy. All 10 bolts have been removed. I've laid the axle back, let it sit in this wheel so that way it wouldn't rock. So now for the moment of truth, let's try to break it loose and pull it out of here. Cool. drain out. I don't think there's a lot in there, but you never know. Got a bag sitting over here. I just know that it's going to drip grease and oil everywhere. But you got to take it out somehow. Yeah, look at that. So right there is why I'm actually going to change out these brake lines. They may look okay on the outside, but whenever I even put the slightest little pressure on this brake line, it snapped in half. On the other side of the car, a lot of you guys were wondering what I used to paint it and why I painted directly under rust. And here's what I have. POR15. Now this is rust paint. I mean, it's literally meant to, it's POR for paint over rust. That's exactly what it's meant to do. And it's designed to paint over really rough and textured surfaces. And what it does is that it'll take that rust and then neutralize it and stop it in its tracks while also leaving a, a nice coating and a protective coating that'll stay for however long the car is together. Uh, the thing is about this rear axle, you know, it's not as rusty as what the uh, underside of the car was, but I did clean it up, and there's still a couple spots here and there that, you know, need a little bit more work, but at the end of the day, this rear axle is ready to go. And this paint over rust POR15 here is very good for the job, and this is a gloss black finish, and it'll last for a long time. I've had really good luck with this stuff in the past, so I want to keep using it, and I'm going to plan on using it on this rear axle.
This POR15 really does lay on nicely and it looks really good once it dries. I'm excited for that gloss finish and it will dull up just a little bit after it dries and then we'll hit it with a second coat. So while we wait, we've got some really cool parts out here that just showed up in the mail. Pretty excited about this box right here. So what these are, these are Hotchkiss Sports leaf springs with a one inch drop. So they will fit in the factory location but drop the car just a little bit lower. The reason I went with these is because I wanted to have the center of gravity as low as possible on this car. It comes with front hangers, all the bushings are polyurethane, U-bolts, and I don't plan on using those U-bolts. I actually bought a set of Man City Racing U-bolts here. And the reason being is because on the factory U-bolts, they are flattened on the end. And that keeps from crushing the axle tube whenever you tighten down the U-bolts itself. So these are all the way, they're round all the way through, while this one is flat on the end. And I like to do that because I've seen my axle tubes uh, get dented in on people using these types of U-bolts on a round axle tube like that. So I don't plan on using those. So the last thing I have here are leaf spring shackles for the rear. They're polyurethane as well, and they're from Hotchkiss. They're just basically stock replacement, but with better bushings. So all that'll work, and we put everything back in together. So to prep for the rear end to go back in the car, we use this paint right here. Now this is called Rust-Oleum. It's truck bed coating. I like it because it doesn't go on very thick, and it lays on pretty smooth and evenly, and it'll kind of, you know, get in the cracks and crevices where I might have missed with a POR15 and then add a little texture to the bottom side of our pan here. So I'm only doing that just to kind of make it all uniform and make it nice. Uh, I use this on the charger. Turned out really well. I like the way that this product does. And it's not as, how you say, clumpy as like undercoating. And I could have gone with that, but I, I prefer to use a struck bed coating. Man, that looks good. Do a couple coats. I did sand this before I did all this. Scuffed it up so that the paint would stick. But once it's all one color, it looks a whole lot better. You know, it's a lot of work to do this to the underside of a vehicle, but you know, I have a peace of mind knowing that I at least did my best to make it all look good. And then, you know, I'll know the work that, and you guys will know too, how much work went into this. And that's that's what's the, the most rewarding part is how much effort you put into a vehicle to make it your own and make it look good. So now you can see everything is coated and it looks so much better. I, I really like the way that this stuff lays down. You just got to make sure that you keep a pretty good distance away from wherever you're painting because it will run. It, it lays on really heavy so you got to be careful. Lay it on light, do light coats. And just to reiterate, I'm not doing the inner wheel wells yet. I'm going to re-undercoat that spot that I scraped off in the last video and I'm going to clean all that dirt off because I want to keep that undercoating. That undercoating worked really well to keep it from rusting so I'm going to clean it off and then we'll hit it with some of this uh, truck bed liner as soon as it's clean but I need to get the dirt off first but you can see you know everything's uniform now and it'll have a little bit of texture to it and everything looks clean under the car now we will take our new Hotchkiss shackles here with these polyurethane bushings disassemble it prepare and get our bushings ready to install in the car so since these are polyurethane they supply you with this grease to keep the car from squeaking because this rubbing on uh, just straight up metal, as hard as it is, is going to cause some squeaks. So we'll put this on it, keep it from doing so, and then we'll press it into the frame rail. I don't know where my seat clamp is, but this will do just fine. Mm -hmm. 
almost. Ha! Look at there. Easy peasy. Shackle and bolt. All the way through. And then shackle, washer, and another on the back side. That way we can tighten it all up. See if we can get it in one go. Look at that. That is a good feeling right there to see that leaf spring in place. Let me throw on the other side real quick and that rear axle is going in for good. So in this instance it's probably a lot smarter to have somebody help you put in this rear axle so you don't drop it on yourself. But it's past 2 o'clock in the morning and everybody else who's smart is asleep. So we'll just do it on our own. So honestly, seeing all this stuff bolted in there is a huge inspiration. It's crazy to just think that this thing was totally apart just a few weeks ago. I mean, we didn't have a trunk floor in there. The rear axle still was all in pieces. No springs, nothing. And now we have a new trunk floor. We've got gas tank supports. We've got the rear axle torn down, painted, and ready to be assembled. Everything looks brand new under this car. And, I mean, it's awesome to see how that looks, honestly. So I still have to take apart the shock plates get those cleaned up and painted, and then we can put our U-bolts in, and then we can install our shocks, and at that point, we'll finish assembling the rear axle. But for now, we'll just admire it and enjoy our hard work. So I'm excited to see these Hotchkiss springs uh, finally on the ground and see how much lower it actually drops the car. You can see everything looks really clean up under here, and that's what I wanted. You know, you look up under the car, and it looks mechanically, it's brand new up under here. And that's what's going to be great about it. It looks, I mean, legit, It's it looks like a restored car. So, you'll, you'll come up on this car and be like, man, this thing's a piece of junk. And then you look under it and you're like, wow, actually some time and money put in this thing. Which both have been done, but that's the fun of it, you know. I'm, I've really enjoyed doing this entire rear of the car, and it's finally starting to come together. And one final shot, just to admire everything. This looks so good. But we're rolling up on 2.42 in the morning, and I'm officially going to call it quits now. Alright, so the video's done. I'm starting to lose my voice, so you have to excuse me. It's pretty early in the morning. Uh, but tonight is a successful night. We got a lot done. Uh, the trunk floor is pretty much wrapped up. We got the underside painted. Uh, we like just a little bit of finishing up, a little prepping on the, uh, the top side. and We'll paint it and do a couple other things to it, but it's pretty much done. And on top of that, we tore our rear axle down, got everything put back together, and it's looking really good with those Hotchkiss springs, that PR15 paint on the housing itself. And we're waiting on some more parts. We're gonna convert to rear disc brakes, get some new axles for it with new bearings, and we'll figure out what gear width ratio we wanna run. I don't know what I wanna put in yet, and that's the reason I didn't put in my uh, center section back in the housing, because I don't know what gear I wanna run. And I probably won't know until I figure out what kind of transmission I run, if I run an overdrive or a direct drive, one-to-one -one final drive ratio transmission. I don't know what I wanna do just yet. We'll have to figure out what kind of, of options are available to me when that time comes. So that'll kind of determine what gear ratio we end up running. So in the meantime, we'll just stick that one back in it 
and I'll put a new gasket in it later and paint the actual center section we use, but for now it'll work. Again, the next video we'll get our uh, shock plates painted up, we'll get the U-bolts in there, and we'll get uh, another cool item that I haven't mentioned yet. We got a rear sway bar from Hellwig just to match the front. So it's gonna be a lot of cool stuff in the next video uh, pertaining to uh, suspension, braking, all that kind of cool stuff. So I'm excited to see all that stuff come to fruition. And I really appreciate you guys sticking around and watching all these videos because it's been a lot of fun. So again, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a like down below. If you have any questions for me, feel free to leave a comment. Also join the Facebook group. Uh, the link is in the description below. That's where I want you to send your projects and we can have a nice little discussion about some uh, cool stories or parts, whatever you're looking for, or possibly just, you know, a little help here and there, a little advice. So it's a good little community and I love talking to you guys and all of you being a part of all that. So it's really awesome. Don't forget to order your t-shirts and your stickers. Appreciate all the orders we've gotten and you guys are a great fan base. It's, it's awesome to see you guys come out and support uh, just doing stuff like this and getting stuff done. And it's really motivational to me to get a lot of positive feedback from you guys. And it's really, really helpful whenever you guys encourage me and tell me to keep going because that really does help. And like I say every single time, you know, without you guys, none of this would be possible. There, there would be no, no challenger build, nothing like that, no abandoned revival, whatever. It wouldn't be possible without you guys. So I really appreciate all that you've done. Thank you so much for watching. And we're almost at 300,000 subscribers. That's great. I'll see you in the next one.